And how many are like Elijah that you don't want to just win, you want your enemies to know they're losing? Right, so you, you picture this, they build this altar, and, and here's the thing, they're crying out, they're screaming, they're shouting, bell, 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 come help us, and they're so tired that they start limping around the altar, they can't even hold themselves up barely, they've been doing this for hours, and Elijah says, keep calling on him, I'm sure he's going to respond, maybe he's amusing himself somewhere, looking, looking at paintings or enjoying the sunset, or, 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 or maybe he's in the bathroom, just keep calling him, and he'll come out, he'll help you, or maybe he's on vacation, he went on a journey, but surely he'll hear you, or maybe he's just taking a nap. You keep calling on him, and they kept calling on him, but joy never came, salvation never came, fire never came. I read an article recently in Christianity Today, and it was about a woman named Doreen. Doreen uh, is in the field of psychology, but she had gotten off in the field of psychology, she had gotten off into new age religion, new age spirituality, and I'm telling you, that is all the rave. And I see a lot, in particular, young people that are into new age, and part of the reason why new age is so appealing is it puts no moral obligation on you. You can have spirituality without any of the expectations that you'll uh, choose righteousness over sin, that you'll try your best to live according to uh, the law of God, the moral law of God. And so if you don't like all the moral stuff, but you like some brand of spirituality, it becomes attractive. And so a lot of people have been coming to our church and, and, and coming to Christ out of all of this because what they're noticing is what Doreen in the article that I read, was she noticed the emptiness of it all. She says this, she says, Uh, After seeking but never finding peace in new age, I have finally found it in Christ. Despite the storms in my life, my hope and my trust in the Lord holds me steady. Anybody else can say that, that in spite of the storms, that Christ holds you steady? The promise of Jesus is not that we won't have trouble, but yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear evil because he's with us. I am a living testimony of his grace. I have seen him in the worst of times, in situations that I would have never invited, would have never wanted. I've seen the faithfulness of God. So I tell you, not what I've heard as a third party, not the rumors that others have said, but I tell you what I've experienced firsthand, that peace, the peace that your heart is longing for, it is found in him. Success offers you something and then you get it and you find out you're empty. Lust offers you something, but it never is satisfied. Your eyes are never satisfied. And so you have to keep upping the ante because you never can reach that same high that you felt at the beginning. Power is an illusion. We don't have control. All it takes is a little virus to remind the whole globe that we're not as powerful as we think. Idols promise but don't deliver, and here these prophets are, and they're worshiping a lifeless God, a lifeless idol. What about you? What about me? What idols have we worshiped? 